Welcome to the Garlic Boys Podcast, where we treat friendship like a good recipe treats garlic. You can never have too much of it. We're your hosts. I'm Connor O'Connor. And I'm William Bartlett, the creator of the Claw Machine, or as you might know it in your time, the Claw Machine. I built it in 1930, and I uh, wanted you to grab things without grabbing them with with a remote control claw. <laughs> That's me, William Bartlett. Matt, what? William, please, please, William. <laughs> or what? Bill. Bill, if you're feeling a little yeah, bit. Bill, sorry, Bill. Uh, my mistake. Um, what led you to create the claw machine? What What were you doing that you were like, oh, this is, this is going to be a fun game for kids and adults alike? Um, it actually started when I wanted to grab things with minimal movement. Mm-hmm. So I created the claw machine so I could just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Right. And press a button and it drops and it grabs. And I don't have to grab anything. Also money. Money? Okay. Money, money, yes, money. Now, when you came up with this idea, did you think, oh, it'll be in every restaurant that has like mediocre diner food but isn't actually like a real diner across the country? Or did you just think like, I'll set it up here, and then maybe some people will like it. It was meant to be a, well, mostly a carnival game at carnivals. Okay. We played at carnivals and, right. you know, uh, exciting carnival-like uh, emporiums, if you will. Um, and uh, then it just kind of evolved. Again, money. Uh, right, right, right. And... I, I, that people paid me to put it in their place because of the the wide success that it got at P.T. Barnum's uh, c- c- carnival uh, thingy. You're, I was you're buddies. Fully, you're fully associating yourself with P.T. Barnum, and you're okay with that. Uh, uh, I mean, yes, he's a, he's a, he's a great man. Uh, he created the carnival as we know it, you know? Right. Him and yeah. the Ringling Brothers. Exactly. Who? The Ringling Brothers. I just remember Barnum. He was like the face of it all, and we were pals. We 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 exchanged some things oh, here and there. Okay, yeah. Like like what what did you exchange with him? Um, I got he got the claw machine, right? And I got a lion, a pet lion. A lion, just yes. one, just one, just well, cause, one. Because lions are pack animals, and they will tend to get super uh, depressed and. Stop eating if they're left alone. Right. Well, I put I in my I had a pastime that I would put on a lion suit and go in with the lion and give him the community he needed. Okay. So you. So let me. Sorry. I just we're we're we're, we're learning. We're getting to know each other. So you would put on yeah. a lion suit. Yes. As a full grown man. Yes. Go into the to the the pasture. I'm, I'm assuming that you cut the yes. lion in. Yes. And then cuddle with the lion. Cuddled with the lion. Yes. Okay. Now he, uh, she, did, she she took she, me in as her cub. Yes. Okay, so you went in. Okay, it was a female lion. Because I was about to say, if you dressed up as a male lion, no, 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 into no. another male lion space, I would get that, attacked. That, yes, that would you you would have gotten very mauled. Yes, I actually uh. But, one of P.T. Barnum's constituents actually made that mistake, and so I, I knew better. I did. I knew better. He was actually looking to get rid of the lions uh, when okay. because because of that. Uh, because of that uh, unfortunate accident. But fortunate for me, I got a lion. Yes. What, uh, whatever happened with your lion? Oh, what, sorry, what was the lion's name? Um, it, it was so long ago. Uh, her name was Lorraine. Lorraine the lion. L- Lorraine the lion. Yes. What whatever ended up happening with Lorraine? Do you still have her, or has she since? Gone My to the guy. Big in the sky. It was in 1930 that I had this lion. It is currently 2023. Okay, a year dude. that I never thought would ever happen, because we were literally dying in our 40s. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't know the life expectancy of a lion. I don't own one. That's why I'm asking questions, dude. 
well, newsflash, it's a lot less than like 90 years. You know what? I'm not really, I'm not really feeling your energy. Uh, I'm going to have to ask you that you leave. Um, you know what? I didn't really want to be I, here anyway. So I, I, I don't like this. I don't, you're yeah. being so hostile, confrontational. Yeah. Well, you're um, asking me questions about lions that I don't really know the answer frankly, to. And I'm frankly, too insecure to, 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 to ask, answer you in, uh, a real way. Yeah. Frankly, frankly, I think what's going on here is that I asked you questions. You didn't have an answer to it. And now you're not being truthful and you're lying to me. Well, maybe some of us, maybe just just a few of us, are un, are 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 insecure whenever we can't answer a question because it diminishes our intelligence and our manhood, and so we don't like to answer them. So we get belligerent. Maybe, maybe just maybe. Were you by chance the inspiration for Ben Stiller's character in Dodgeball and Underdog Story? Because not <laughs> not only is your personality bleeding into that character but the voice <laughs> is very similar as well now um i've actually never seen dodgeball <laughs> matt where did you come from <laughs> uh, did william hurt you did he stick his light on you no i i kicked him in the butt um and made him leave uh yeah, because i heard the things he was saying to you and that was just mean such a jerk did you know yeah. he was lying to me he was lying to you yeah, yeah. at least he wasn't a cheetah like when we play poker, he doesn't cheat. Yeah. Cheat. Tigers, man. <laughs> uh, <anyway. laughs> You've never seen Dodgeball, though? No, never seen Dodgeball. That's It's been on my list, but you gotta, like... You gotta watch it. I own it. Yeah. I own that on DVD. <laughs> you know what's crazy is... Though you had your... I was about to say, I, own, I collected DVDs in college as like one of my two side hobby things. Mm -hmm. And we never watched any of them. And I was like, well, we didn't have anything to watch them on. You had a PS3. We could have watched them at any time. A PS4. Yes, we could have yeah. watched them at any time. PS3 is okay. I had a PS4. Uh, and yes, we could have watched them at any time. It was basically mm -hmm. a DVD player. And I think it could have. No, I got it pretty early on. So it might not have been able to play Blu ray. I don't I never Blu -rays test. anyways. I don't like Blu ray. Okay. I, I don't trust it. I don't know what the difference is, if I'm being 100% honest. One's blue, I think. <laughs> Actually, yeah, probably. You'd have to be pretty smart to understand the difference, you know? Yeah, which I am not. I'm not exactly the... You know, I still don't... Oh, wait, wait. No, I'm sorry. I'm not very clever, so... Thank you. Thank you. Would you, do you want to see? <laughs> we, we can actually see if you're clever if you'd like by doing yes. this week's clever boy quiz. <laughs> I, uh, you, you were texting me like about this <laughs> quiz, not like obviously listeners. He wasn't giving me any details because Connor's not that nice. Uh, yeah. but he was saying how, how in depth these questions are, and I'm I'm really terrified. I don't think I'm gonna do well. I put a lot of effort into this quiz. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, when Connor puts effort in, you know it's it's something. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Alrighty, are you ready for this week's Clever Boy quiz? I am. You I'm focus. so ready. You're, I'm. You're a hundred percent. You're on your phone. <laughs> you're not focused. Tell me, you will talk to her later. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not Mia. She's uh, she's at work right now. But um, yeah, you're it at was work too. It was a secret project that you'll learn about later. Yeah. <laughs> Are you All right, quit. Maybe? With my brother? No. No, that would be ridiculous. And I'm conspiring you. with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm the only one that's allowed to conspire with the other's mom. <laughs> no, I'm not conspiring with anybody. On to the quiz. Alrighty. Let's, this week's quiz it. is called. Live from Pennsylvania, it's Friday afternoon. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we actually we actually switched up our recording day because our Sunday re recording session was so bad. It was so such we... an unusable episode. 
<laughs> it was so bad. So we had to switch it to now Friday afternoon uh, to re-record an episode and hopefully get it out by Sunday. So yeah, we'll get it out. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> this this quiz is it's called Live from Pennsylvania. It's Friday afternoon. What do you think it's going to be on? Uh, late night talk show hosts. I'm going to say no, technically, but uh, that could fall under the category. It's it's on Saturday Night Live. Oh, cool. I've never watched it. Well, then you're not going to do well on this quiz. Great. I've watched clips, if that helps, but that's about it. Well, you mentioned Pete, uh, Pete Davidson last week, and so... I love that, man. Uh, just going to... thought, hey, let's make a nice and out quiz. I like uh, it. So, uh, some of these are going to be multiple choice. I'll let you know beforehand. Some of them you're just going to have to give me an answer. We've got a variety of different questions here. Like I said, they're detailed questions. So, wait and receive all the information before you complain. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Is Ready? there a buzzer? Am I hitting a buzzer? No. Okay. Ah! Sorry. That was me testing out my buzzer that I'm totally <laughs> going to hit every, every question. I hope you don't. Question <laughs> number one. In what year did SNL premiere? 1973, 1974, 1975, or 1976? This is like, oh my gosh, these are the questions that would trip me up on uh, like tests and stuff. Like when I was taking tests in school, I would look for the outlier and usually either guess that one or uh, I would not guess that one because it was too far out, you know? Uh okay, so three, four, five, or six, right? Seventy, three, four, five, or six. Yep. Um, let's go. I like the number five, so let's go. Nineteen seventy-five, baby. Final answer. Final answer. That is correct. Whoo! All it right. In October, I believe, of nineteen seventy-five. Five's a good number for all these for all you people out there who don't five know. Five is the that best number. Five is the only good number. <laughs> Do not accept anything less. <laughs> all right, number two. <laughs> True or false? The largest ever cast contained twenty five cast members. Ooh, you're you're really like you're really harping on my number five fixation uh i'm gonna say because of that i'm gonna go false also if you will final answer final answer that is correct oh right largest ever cast was only 21 cast members it was actually season 47 which was last season wow yeah the 2021 2022 it also had a the highest uh, departure rate. I'm not sure if it was ever, but in recent years, with eight cast members departing. Wow, we're breaking records here, baby. It was it was time for some of them to go. Uh, yeah, like they, they they said that themselves, but it was also just too many people. Yeah, yeah, was, I can imagine. And then and then you're like, well, why are we seeing the same people over and over again? Why can't we see like new people do, doing this type of bit and it's because there was just so many people, and I, I don't know. It, it got to be a lot. That's fair. Number three. Who was the original host of Weekend Update? Of Weekend Update. Yes. For those of you who don't know, Weekend Update is the uh, mock news show that is done during Saturday Night Live. It is a mainstay of it, and it actually helped introduce other uh, comedy shows such as The Daily Show and The Colbert Report on which they started making fun of the news. Right, right, right. Um, isn't like Colin whatever doing doing it right now? I swear it's not uh, Colin. I will let you know that the current hosts are Colin Jost and Michael Che. Yes, okay. I was going to say, I, I, I've i seen clips of this. Um, what? Who is the first host? Yes. Do I get multiple choice for this one? No. Oh, boo. I don't know. Um, I can give you a hint. Sure. 
he is in a TV show you enjoy watching. In a TV show I enjoy watching. Um, I am 75% positive. Cool, cool, cool. That Chevy Chase is on SNL, so I'm going to go Chevy Chase. Final answer? Final answer. That is correct. Okay, before you said cool, 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 I was actually going to guess Chevy Chase. Um, I was just taking my time getting there. I, I did see the look in your eye of, oh, I am right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> I would have known if I would have known if it was, oh, so that's what he's saying instead of, oh, I am right. Yeah. Yep. 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 We're just, you know, best friends. I know we're, we're best friends. We 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 just know, you know, yeah, best friend telepathy. You know. Yeah. Speaking of number four. Mm-hmm. This actually has nothing to do with what we were just talking about. I just wanted to answer this question. <laughs> just a nice transition, a little transition there. Number four. Mm-hmm. Keenan Thompson has the longest tenure out of any cast member and appearing in 20 seasons starting in 2003. Dang, dude. But which of these cast members has the second longest tenure? Okay. Fred Armisen, Daryl Hammond, Cecily Strong, or Al Franken? I don't know a single one of those people at all. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> I bet I bet you do know one of them. Uh, did you watch the new um, uh, Wednesday series? No, I didn't. Who does she? Or who does the person, the actor, play in Uncle Fester? Uh, Fred Armisen yeah. plays Uncle Fester. Definitely didn't. You know what? I was kind of leaning toward his name anyway. It's probably wrong, but I'm going to guess Fred Arm Armis Arm Armisen. Army Hammer. I mean Fred Armisen. Yes. It's a final answer. Final answer, baby. That is incorrect. Ah, oh, dang. The answer is Daryl Hammond, and I did not write down how many seasons he was on for. I believe it was 13 though. Nice. Uh, so he he is second by quite some margin. Um, I think I read in an interview. I don't know if Keenan Thompson has plans to leave anytime soon. Yeah. Oh, he's um, a champ. He's he's running it. Well, there there are talks that um, Lauren Michaels is going to leave after the fiftieth season. Mm. Keenan Thompson was quoted saying that he doesn't know if the show will last after that because he thinks the budget is going to get cut, and if the budget is going to get cut, um. And then the quality is just going to go downhill and all of that. And he's like, I think it's better just to end it instead yeah. of making people watch as it deteriorates. But yeah, that's fair. Who knows? I, I hope it goes well for the show. I enjoy it a yeah. lot. Yeah, I, I, I honestly need to watch it. It's hilarious. I know it is. Um, I just haven't done that yet. Yeah, it happens. It's, I mean, it's on late on Saturdays. So. That's very late. 10.30. Wow, we That's like when I go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, number Anyways. five. Number five. Presidential impressions are a staple of SNL's performances, allowing yes. both cast members and guest stars to do some topical impressions. But which of these presidents had, had the most performers do impressions of them? Interesting. Okay. Ronald Reagan. Bill Clinton. Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Uh, Bill Clinton. Final answer. That is incorrect. Ooh, okay. All right. It That's was fair. Ronald Reagan. Ronald had Reagan. Six okay. Different actors portray him. All right. That's fair. I believe Clinton only had two. Okay. One of them, I believe, was Harold Hammond, actually. Um, then Trump had one. Alec Baldwin. Alec Not Baldwin. Alec. Yeah. And uh, Joe Biden had three, including Jason Sudeikis, who played him during the 2008 presidential elections. Yep, I do remember that. All right. Number six. Lauren Michaels, the creator of the show, left for a few years, causing the quality of the show to go downhill until the time of his return. But what years did he leave for? Oh, God. 
Was okay. it 80 through 85, 85 through 90, or 90 through 95? Let's go 85 through 90. Smack dab in the middle. Final answer? Final answer. Matt, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. He actually yeah. left for the 80 through 85 years. And this was uh, sometimes yes. referred to as the dark ages for SNL because okay. the uh, the entire cast quit um, after he left. And they started hiring on some new people. One of those people being Eddie Murphy, mm. who was the only like sheen, shining light in that time period. And he actually went on to host while still being a cast member. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because his star power blew up during that time. Yeah. Thankfully, Lauren Michaels came back after 85 and they were able to bring the show back up to super some quality. But um, the just it wasn't hitting the same standards. Um, some of the cast they brought in were not good. Some were just not good yet. And a lot of them were um, more known performers at that time that just weren't good in the SNL space. Okay. We'll, get, we'll get we'll get on to that later. Oh boy. <laughs> Can't wait. Now, number seven. How many cast members have also been hosts for Weekend Update? Oh Lord. Uh I will let you know I wrote this question over. That's why I stopped. I do have answers for you. I here, here's a how I wrote this question. How many cast members have also been hosts for Weekend Update has there been so far? <laughs> <laughs> nice um, But these are cast members that are also Hosts of Weekend Update So they, they could do other things They might have been promoted to this Or they might have not stuck with it So there's there's different ways to this could have been. Was it 17 23 25 or 33 I was going to guess 5 uh, That's a big number <laughs> jump um, but They're on their 48th season <laughs> I know, I know, but I just thought people stuck to one job, you know? Let's go 17. I like 17. Let's do 17. Final, final answer? Final answer. You fool. You fell for the greatest blunder. It was 25. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Uh, I hate you. <laughs> Notable other Weekend Update hosts, or anchors, as some may call them. Of course, we talked about Chevy Chase. As the original, uh, Colin Quinn. Um, if you've ever seen the grown up movies, he was the old guy that was mad at Adam Sandler's character. Uh, he's he's part of the, that group, uh, in that time period of Adam Sandler being on SNL, and so he's in a lot of Adam Sandler's movies, right? Um, he, he's very much funny on his own, right? He does like one man shows on Broadway, I think. Um, nice. Norm McDonald was also uh, a host for some time. Um, controversially, he believed, uh, he always stated that he was fired for making fun of OJ uh, as one of the NBC executives were friends with OJ, and he says that was why he was fired. At least that's Ouch. what I've read. Um, and then Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, Jimmy Fallon, Seth Meyers, and Cecily Strong were all um, hosts for Weekend Update. And like we said earlier, the currents are Michael Che and Call him Jost, and they have been there for 14 years. Gotcha. Wow. I think. I think. That's I a lot of years. Yeah, but they're good at it. Oh, yeah. They're hilarious. Alrighty. Number eight. This is a special question. So, Oh, boy. So excited. SNL has spawned 11 spinoff movies from some of their most successful sketches over the years. Can you name five of those movies? What? Five? That's less than half, my guy. Don't get I, mad. I don't care if that's less than half. That's so many movies. I don't know a single movie. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my gosh. They've spawned five movies they off spawned of spawned 11. Schedule. I'm sorry. They spawned 11 movies, and I have to name five of them. I... I won't even be able to name one. I've personally watched eight of the 11. Interesting. Much eight. I, well, you know, I'm literally like so uncultured uh, in, in movies. You're not uncultured. You just read while I watch movies because I have a personality. 
I watch movies too, but that doesn't mean I know that they were based on SNL sketches. Sketches. Okay. Sketches. sketches. Well, Sketch. think think back on any movies that you watch that might have been with people that were on SNL. Oh boy, I we have established correct that I have not watched SNL. <laughs> Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, this might be a bit far fetched, but since Chevy Chase was on there, let's go maybe the vacation movie. One of them, winter, summer, probably summer, the first one. That's okay. I, listen, I'm not going to get a single one. You know this. You're going to get um, so mad when I tell you the answers. It's going to be hilarious. Um, let's go. Daddy Daycare. You did nope. talk about... Uh, listen, let me just guess my five and you can tell me if I'm wrong afterwards. Okay, so we got we got Vacation, the first vacation, movie. The first. Na uh, sorry, let me give it the full title. National Lampoon Presents Vacation. Yeah. Yep, yep, that yep. SNL movie from yeah, National the Lampoon. SNL movie. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, Daddy Daycare. Daddy Daycare. Don't forget Daddy Daycare with uh, the one guy, Eddie Murphy, we were talking about earlier. Right, right. That's Eddie Murphy. So that's 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 a cast member. There you go. Um, let's see. Who else has been in movies? Um... I do know the one. Oh, here we go. The one girl is in. Um, is it the same girl? Don't you say it. <gasps> Ghostbusters. No. Nope. Ghostbusters. Because uh, Melissa McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy is in Ghostbusters. Not a cast member. I swear she was. She's a cast member, isn't she? No. She's just like a guest member you, or something. You picked the one lead in that movie that wasn't on SNL. I swear. Kate McKinnon, Kristen Wiig, and Leslie Jones were all SNL cast members. Melissa McCarthy has hosted SNL. Right. But she wasn't a cast member. So she's been in sketches, but like was never actually a cast member. I see. See, that's where I'm that's where I'm getting it all mixed up. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me that I'm wrong and tell me the answers. <laughs> Look, I'm just gonna if you could have named one Rush Hour. Would, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just watched that for the first time <laughs> just, this weekend, so I just, I just neither, Step Brothers. Neither Step Brothers. No. <laughs> what about Talladega Nights? No. Oh, so Wilfer was. was an SNL. Yes, Those I know he was. SNL movies. <laughs> well, how was I supposed to know? Oh, okay. Your movies that you could have chosen. Hit me! Hit me! Hit me! I want you to do it. Hit me! The Blues Brothers. Oh, Wayne's nice. I just World. bought that. Okay. Wayne's World. Coneheads. Wayne's oh, World yeah. 2. It's Pat. Stewart Saves His Family. Blues Brothers 2000. A Night at the Roxbury. Superstar. The Ladies Man. And McGruber. I've never seen a single one of those. I've seen eight. I have seen both Blues Brothers, both Wayne's Worlds, Coneheads. Uh, Night at the Roxbury, Superstar, and McGruber. Nice. I actually just bought the in the five dollar box at uh, at Walmart. I bought the Blues Brothers, the both of them. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of hurt that you haven't watched it earlier, but than this, uh, because it's such a good movie. Yeah. What can um, you do? Number nine. <laughs> ben Stiller, Robert Downey Jr., Steve Martin, and Martin Short are all well-seasoned actors, but each served only one season as a cast member in SNL. Well, except one of them didn't. One wasn't a cast member at all. Do you know who it was? So you said, I'm sorry, Ben Stiller, Robert Downey Jr., Martin Short, and who? Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess Robert Downey Jr. Final answer. Final answer. Yeah. Matt, that is incorrect. It was Steve Martin, wasn't it? It was Steve Martin. Ah! Robert, Robert Downey Jr. was a cast member for one season, and he was bad. Oh, 
lord. It was during almost... that time in the 80s where they were trying to bring on other big stars. They right. did the same with Ben Stiller and Martin Short uh, in Billy Crystal as well during this time. Um, like they had pre-established fame, uh, and they just tried to make them into sketch comedy people, and they just didn't really mesh that well. Uh, Steve Martin was never a cast member, but had hosted so many times back then that people just assumed he was. Right, okay. Um, he was actually one of the first people inducted into the Five Timers Club. For the for the listeners at home again who uh, are stupid and they don't know what that is, uh, enlighten us a little bit on what the Five Timers Club is. Oh, I sure will. Number 10. <laughs> five time- <laughs> the Five Timers Club is a group of hosts who has, as the name suggests, have hosted five or more time. The <laughs> first inductee to the club was actor Buck Henry. But do you know who has hosted the most times? Uh, the most times. Stop doing the thing where you caress the mic pop. <laughs> We've been but over I, this, and other people on the inagri- other people on the internet have agreed that it's creepy. What, what person? I've I'm I'm on all of our social media. I don't remember a single person ever commenting saying that they don't like it. You don't check our YouTube shorts. Oh yeah, I definitely don't. Um, uh, which, if you if you'd like to see more from us, uh, go to youtube.com at the Carlock Boys. Nice. Yeah, definitely do that. Uh, Melissa McCarthy. Final answer. You, I because I've never watched it. Yeah, final answer. Right, that is incorrect. What a shocker! <laughs> the answer was Alec Baldwin. Oh, nice. I could have guessed that. I guess I thought he was a cast member. In my nope. head. Uh, and for a bonus point, uh, this was set up in case you were tied by the time you Which asked this I'm question. definitely Which not. not. <laughs> I've gotten <laughs> like three. <laughs> uh, how many times has Alec Baldwin hosted? Uh, how many times did you say the other guy hosted that started it? I didn't. Oh, you didn't. Oh, I thought you did. Uh, 17, because I guessed 17 earlier, so I'm going to guess it again this time. Matt, that's correct. What? No. Oh, that's so good. He hosted 17 times once more than Steve Martin. Once more than Steve Martin. Screw you, Steve Martin. And no, Steve Martin's not the one that's on trial for uh, manslaughter. For murdering somebody. Yeah. No, it is actual uh, murder, not manslaughter. So yeah. Steve Martin might actually have the chance to uh, beat that record. Yeah. Screw you, Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Yeah. Learn gun safety. Learn gun safety. Nerd. Totally. Nerd? What 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 anyway. guy doesn't know gun safety? This is this is 2023. Everybody's got a gun. The only way to beat a bad guy with a gun is with security officers with a gun. Exactly. Right, Thank you. Oh my gosh, you're you're helping my job. I'm so cute. No problem. By the way, you just lost again. Um <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I wasn't aware. Yeah, no, that's that's a third loss for this sector. Um, as many of you know, Matt lost a few episodes ago. You can watch his punishment live on YouTube. Um and so after that, I cleaned out his slate of losses. He's now at a three uh total of three losses. But he's still at his six wins. So you are still a clever a six times six equals clever boy. Sure, yeah. Again, I um, don't know why <laughs> I um, called it that. For those of you with uh with I shouldn't say weak stomachs because that implies that you're weak, but for those of you that that stomachs can't exactly enjoy uh gagging noises, I wouldn't suggest the episode, but like again. Put it on, turn the volume down. It's great. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, it's it's fun. It's a fun episode. Oh, it's a really great if, episode. If you guys like Matt getting angry and mad, he not only yells at me, he also yells at his mother. Yeah, because she deserves it. She bought me. Well, technically, my dad bought the cottage cheese in the episode. I'm just, uh, listen, I'm just hoping the next There's episode. There's quite a few of us that he's mad at in that episode. I'm just, I'm just hoping the next punishment is not as disgusting um like i'm fine with punishments 
I'm just hoping for one that's a little bit less disgusting than eating an entire pound of cottage cheese. I guess we'll see. Guess we'll see. You want to hear uh, my thing for this week? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so I was scrolling along. Uh, I don't go on Twitter very often, but I was scrolling along probably Facebook or Instagram or possibly also TikTok. Um, anything but Twitter. And I uh, came across uh, something really, really, really funny to me. Um, I'm a big fan of nature, uh, as 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 you guys may know. And I have yet to name this segment, but I'm hoping to make it a little, uh, a little uh, continuous weekly segment, maybe. Um, uh, I'm just going to call it National Park Service. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> it's really bad, but. Uh, it's funny. Um, so basically, National Park Service uh, has a lot of really funny tweets. Whoever is doing their tweeting over there is a genius. Comedy gold. Um, and of course, like any good comedian, I steal comedy from other comedians to, to, to take it as my own. So I'm going to read you uh, just a couple of the National Park Service tweets. Um, <laughs> I, I love these tweets. Sorry, I'm, I'm scrolling through the tweets and they're just so good. All right. So this one, uh, this one was two days ago as of recording. Um, don't go chasing waterfalls. Cautiously approach and be careful of slippery conditions. In fact, you may just want to stick to the rivers and lakes that you're used to. Uh, I love Destiny's Child. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, See, uh, Matt probably didn't get this joke, but you guys probably did. Uh, Waterfalls is a song by TLC, not by Destiny's Child. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, Matt, this... do you know the difference between uh, Destiny's Child and uh, TLC? Um, I know that Destiny's Child is made up of it's it is it beyonce or is it rihanna was part of them i think was, was beyonce that? and her sister and then somebody else i was about to ask if you could tell me which one had beyonce in it but they yeah i don't know anything about tlc at all um okay so this one was from three days ago national park service said if you think someone is staring at you number one yawn number two if they yawn they were staring and then it just has a, a hashtag the more you know and it says it has a picture of a little fox underneath that's yawning you can't see it because this camera is crap um but it's a little yawning fox uh next one and this might be the last one because uh they're so cute um the next one it says hello from the otter slide must have slid a thousand times and then it just says river otter slides down a snowbank onto the ice. <laughs> it's just river otters that are sliding down a snowbank. It's great. If you want to smile, um, I would just scroll through the National Park Service Twitter. Hello from the other side. Welcome to Slid a thousand times. Welcome to the Garlic Boys Singing Tell Podcast. You, I'm an otter. The, <laughs> the you week didn't know that I'm <laughs> not a fairy. Come okay. on now, bro. I'm sorry. Don't I have you see that I'm in a river. Can I can I read you this Twitter thread? <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> okay. If you see if it, sorry. If you come across this, the bear... Okay, hold on, shut up. Is this the one that if you see push down, you fat friend, or whatever? Because I I will drive to your house right now No, punch you. It's not about fat people. If you come across the bear, never push a slower friend down, even if you feel the friendship has run its course. If not friend, why friend-shaped? What about your <laughs> other friend? Seeing a bear in the wild is a special treat for any visitor to a national park. Well, it is an exciting moment. It is important to remember that bears in national parks are wild and can be dangerous. 
When spring arrives and the snow begins to melt, many bears become more active. Find bear safety tips at staying safe around bears. Bears, U.S. National Parks, NPS.gov. That was funny. I like that. I like that. That's a good segment, man. <laughs> How'd you find another one? Hold on, hold on. This person... Doubled over last <laughs> this person is so good. <laughs> All right, what you got? What you got? Come on. It just says, it, it just says potato or manatee. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it. No, um, that's, a, that's a tough question. I need, oh my gosh, please tell me that I can just briefly. Oh, it's so bright. The, the wait, what send, it to to... Send, it, send it to me. Send it to me. Yeah, but the vis the viewers, the viewers have to see it too. Um, let me send it to you real quick on Telegram, this fancy new app where we can send things back and forth between iPhone and Android because Connor refuses to be a decent human being. I don't want to just give up the thousands of dollars I spent on my phone to get the twenty dollar phone you have. The twenty? Oh my gosh, man! Well, you if so yours is the one that goes to a lower quality, whose phone's the problem here? No, it's it's literally okay. We're we're not having this argument over. Oh, look whose camera's great! Oh, look whose camera's even better! Suck it! Look at mine. You can actually <laughs> see it. It's just because my brightness is up too, too much. Uh, I'm gonna say that's a manatee. Uh, I was actually inclined to agree. Uh, viewers, not the listeners, because viewers can't see. Well, uh, listeners, if you want to be a viewer, you know what to do. Exactly. Make sure you check out our video and tell us if you think it's a potato or a manatee. Um, I just think his face is really cute. It's a cute little manatee. Well, <laughs> you know what we should do before we forget? Sorry. No, you're uh, fine. Remember what you bought? You have that, right? Oh, yes, I do have let's, that. Let's do that before we forget because... You're gonna fall down this rabbit hole. I'm, I'm not trying to like. I know, a honestly. Hole, but... No, you're fine because uh, my rabbit hole was gonna keep going, and I need to save some stuff for right. next episode. And I'm gonna start with that one. It's so good. Uh, I bought. I didn't buy. I actually received this from a, a friend at work. A friend mm -hmm. from work. Um, strawberries and cream, zero sugar, Dr Pepper, baby. It may not be yeah. regular Dr. Pepper, zero, or, uh, Dr. Pepper, strawberries and cream, but it was all I had. I have oh. already had the opportunity to try the Dr. Pepper, strawberries and cream, but um, I went out and I tried to get another one so, so I could try it with Matt, um, but I couldn't find it. So I grabbed this uh, because I thought we could enjoy this two liter <laughs> together. He's, um, so he's, he's remember, probably gonna he's probably gonna drink the entire two liter this episode, people. No, I was gonna say we should drink it together so that we can remember what the original Dr. Pepper tastes like. Right, right. You being uh an hour away from me, we're just gonna share this Dr. Pepper. Oh, send it over Telegram. Oh, you're right. I should just drink <laughs> it myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Connor finishes it. <laughs> <laughs> explosive i wouldn't be surprised if connor finishes that this episode um and it's burping the rest of the time um i will also be burping because dr pepper has that effect on me but here we go let's take the first first delicious sip of dr pepper strawberries and cream hmm Ooh. Ooh, what did you say last week? It kind of tastes like medicine, but like the good medicine. So I didn't say it last week. Uh, last week, the, the week the you had at home. Uh, I tried it on the unreleased episode. Uh, oh, on, on, I tried it on the unreleasable episode. Um, we're, I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> we're going to try to clip that and just put that up for everyone to listen to. I said it tasted like those old people strawberry and cream candies. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's exactly what it tastes like, and mine even more so because it's got zero sugar <laughs> and it just has that has that artificial I, taste to it. I have Dr Pepper all over my pants now. <laughs> That's how you live. 
arrow from the other side. All right, I'm putting on hand sanitizer. My hands are sticky now from <laughs> cleaning up. It, it exploded from, all over my pants. From, from the Dr. Pepper, yes, yeah. I'm so glad I'm wearing black pants today so you won't be able to see the wet spots, but... Are you wearing your leggings? No. Uh, okay. Though those leggings do match this hoodie very well. Yeah, I know. That's why I saw the hoodie and I thought you would be wearing the leggings with it. So in college, I think we've talked about how I did a singing competition senior year. Oh, excuse me. You were right. I was going to burp the rest of the episode. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have chugged half of that, Dr. Pepper. Yeah, bad idea. Um, I did the singing competition and uh, I uh, <laughs> I decided to make uh, to make my first song, The Saga Begins by Weird Al, which is his yeah. parody of American Pie by Don McLean, I believe. Sure. Um, bye, bye, this American Pie. Yeah. But yeah. Um, we all know the song. Thank you. I was like, okay, what do I have that's like Jedi esque and still kind of like looks nice? And so I was like, oh, I got this, this little brown knitted hoodie. That's really nice. And I was like, okay, oh, yeah. well, Jedi's wear leggings, technically. Like, they wear tights underneath their robes. Exactly. So why don't I just wear my leggings? Exactly. And if you're, if you're sitting there asking yourself, Connor, why do you own leggings? It's 2019. Uh, it's 2019. so judgmental, okay? Um, get with it, people. Get with it or get out of the freaking way. Leggings are the most comfortable thing I've ever put they're on so these nice, legs. Dude. They're so I can't, nice. I can't believe girls are gatekeeping leggings. Like, <laughs> see, that's the problem. All right, here's a rant I'm going to go on. Who decides what's fashionable? Mainly women. And who do, like, the fashion industry, I think, is mainly women. Like, I, I all I know is Heidi Klum. That's, like, it for me. I'm, um, I'm almost positive that the, the fashion industry was dominated a lot by men for a long you can't time. Prove that, okay? Name one famous I, man that does clothes. Uh, Giorgio Armani. Uh, I don't Calvin know who that Clyde. Is. Uh, Never heard of him. No BS. <laughs> Look, anyway, there's a lot uh, of them. <laughs> women in my life have been telling me what to wear for so long. Yeah, absolutely. And Same. It's also just like, oh, why are leggings only being marketed towards women? Because it's a hoax. It's they a want hoax. men to be uncomfortable. They want men do you think, to wear What jeans? do you think women get to wear? Leggings, shorts, dresses, skirts. You know, things that aren't constricting, that don't cause a buildup of heat, that let things breathe. Huh. Listen, I'm not... Why would, I, why would we need that, guys? There's <laughs> nothing important outside of our body. I'm not I'm not Scottish, I, although I wish I was. Um, I may have some Scottish in there, but it's not like I'm purely Scottish. I believe they had it right when they were wearing kilts. Yeah, um, they 100 percent had it right. Let it breathe, man. Let it. Excuse me. Now I'm burping. Let it be comfortable. Let it let it be how it wants to be. I'm just this is what I'm man. saying. Crazy. Leggings are the future, and I think every man in 10 years will be wearing leggings. And you, you just the sooner you embrace it, the better you'll feel. That's 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 it. That's it. Anyways, uh, so <laughs> I've been uh, I, I think we discussed this um, at the end of last year, but uh, I record every movie I watch during a year. And yeah. Um, I have watched 10 movies so far this year. That's not a lot. I should have watched more. I just slightly have a thing about watching movies by myself. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to give a quick rating for the 10 movies that I've watched so far this year uh, and, and sort of talk about them. Um, first one is This Place Rules. I watched this with AJ. It was a documentary about America. Uh, from this guy that like went to the rallies and everything leading uh -huh. up to the January 6th insurrection. Okay. Um, I don't really remember much about it. This was very early on in the year, as it is my first movie. Um, it's on HBO Max. Check it out. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. All right. 
Number two, White Noise. This movie sucks. Okay? Don't watch it. Adam Adam Driver and Greta Gerwig. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, it's terrible, though. There's two different movies within this movie, and neither one of them is particularly good. Um, oh, I did hear about that, where it feels like you're literally watching like several... Yeah, you might have told me about that. Yeah, I think I did. Um, his, main, his main... His job is he's a professor at a college. Right. And he's an expert in Hitler. And like the Nazis and World War, not World War Two, like Hitler and Nazis. That's that's what he's an expert in. Nice. So like, there's this whole disaster movie thing where this un, unrealistic idea of a train crashes that spills like this toxic fume of uh, chemical cloud over this place. Um, and like it, she's being weird to start with, and I think I've talked about this before, but basically, he thinks he's gonna start dying because he got exposed to this cloud, and she has this fear of death, so she's been getting these drugs to help her get over her fear of death. But she's yeah. uh, she's been exchanging them for sex, and so he gets mad about it when he finds out, and he goes and tries to kill the guy that she's been getting the pills from, shoots him twice with like a very small gun, and he doesn't die. By and he tried to making it look like him a, a suicide, even though he shot him twice in the chest. Nice. Uh, so he puts the gun to the guy's hand. The gun then is still alive and shoots both him and the wife that shows up. Oh um, my gosh. <laughs> uh, it just grazes them though. And then they're like, fine, we can't let him die. And they take him to this church where these nuns are like doing medical stuff as well. And they're like, hey, nun, do you believe in God? And they're like, maybe. And then the movie ends in a, a dance sequence montage in a supermarket because it was such a new thing back then because this is like the 60s also right. don Cheadle and andre 3000 are in this movie <laughs> two out of ten listen um, <laughs> listen montages do in fact make everything better um which is the only reason this movie gets a two i'm sure <laughs> I was just so confused by the time it got to the dance <laughs> that I just didn't know what was going on, and I didn't realize the movie was ending. That's fair. Uh, number three, Bullet Train. Uh, oh. This is a fantastic movie, fantastic cast. Um, believe it was the same guy uh, who did Deadpool one and two uh, for the action. Um, stellar cast. You got Brad Pitt, of course. Um, Bri- any, uh, any Bryce, other cast members? Brian Tyree Henry. I almost said Bryce Dallas Howard. That's why I was taking a beat, Matthew. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, uh, Joey King, um, uh, uh, Michael Shannon, uh, Zazie Beats, Bad Bunny, Sandra Bullock, um, and a few other people. Um, I apologize. I do not know how to pronounce this actor's name. But the guy who fights Hawkeye in Endgame, like the the samurai fight in the rain. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's in there as well. Nice. Um, and uh, just a few other people here and there. Um, it's very cool. It takes place on a bullet train, as you could have guessed. Uh, just a fun action comedy. Uh, nine out of ten. We need to get bullet trains in America. Actually, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. There were some things in the movie that made me like, that wouldn't happen, but whatever. And we do mm-hmm. need bullet trains in America. Get on that. Number four, Violent Night. Oh, that's the Santa Claus movie with uh, David Harbour? David Harbour, yep. Oh, I want to see that so it's bad. David Harbour versus John Leguizamo. I want to see that so bad. If you're not sure who John Leguizamo is, uh, he was Sid the Sloth and Uncle Bruno. <laughs> Nights. Nice. He also played Luigi in the '90s Mario movie mm. with uh, gotcha. Bob Hopkins. Um, it is the same guy, same action director that I was talking about. Um, I want to say David Leach, but I was that's so wrong. Uh, anyways, um, basically, this family's super rich, and they're getting robbed on Christmas Eve. Uh, the dad to calm down the daughter gives him gives her a uh, a walkie-talkie. Says that you can talk directly to Santa with it, but he's not always going to answer because he's super busy. Mm. Well, Santa is in the house when the the guys are get like attacking and everything, and so um, 
he fights off a few guys and like makes his way down to the basement basically and finds the other walkie-talkie and hears what's going on from the little girl he's like all right i'll help and just starts murdering people and we're like well why does santa know how to fight so well turns out before he was santa claus he was a viking warrior <laughs> and, so and good. it's so good and he's like my main weapon of choice was a hammer Ah, I missed my hammer. And then he's in the stables at one point and he finds a sledgehammer and he's like, well, it's time to start killing again. And just starts beating people to death with a sledgehammer. What? Oh my gosh. I need to watch this. It's so good. I'm not going to spoil the big twist that comes in the end of the movie. Okay. Um, but there's supposed to be a sequel and they cannot wait to see what that's going to be. Oh, please. Um, I'm going to give this a seven and a half out of 10 only because the writing was so bad, but the, oh. the action and just like the pure ah factor of it brings it up. All right. All right. So this is going to be the best movie I've watched this year. And I need to preface that because it's going to be funny when I tell you what the movie is. Oh, Maybe boy. you're going to believe me. Here, here goes. Fifth movie, best movie so far this year, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. I'm not laughing at that. I've heard it's such amazing things about so it. So good. The yeah. first, the first like block of this movie is him fighting this giant. And it's literally like it's the way it's animated, there's like movement lines, things like that. And and I was there with some friends who like actually watch anime and we're like, this is just a kaiju battle. And like yeah. it, it, it's such like an anime style and like such a good storyline like i didn't feel like oh this wasn't a story i needed to be told like it made sense why we were here ever like the continuation of it and everything um the voice actors of course they bring back um selma hayek as kitty softpaws from the first um puss in boots movie uh um john uh john mulaney was um little john or little the dude who puts his thumb in a plum. I forget the nursery rhyme. Um, I do too, but I know what you're talking about. And then there's Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Goldilocks, of course, played by the lovely Florence Pugh. Yes. Um, oh, man, I love her. And um, d just, just from what I've seen, though, like just clips. Yes. This is one of the best villains uh, in, in anything that I've seen. And I've only seen clips. Like um, yeah, so I'm not gonna ruin the twist with the villain for you, but um, I will say that he is as menacing as the clips allow you to, yeah. and it's um, it's one of the first times we see Puss in Boots's confidence sh shaking. Yeah, yeah, and, and, like that should tell you how good a villain he is. Ten out of ten. Number six, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Still haven't seen it, man. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give too many spoilers on this one. I think I think you should go see this movie. Um yeah. it's not as bad as people are saying. Yeah. What, um it's not what people expected it to be, and it's not I think phase four and what's come after Endgame have gotten so much hate because people are like, Well, it's, it's not this, it's not that, it's not Iron Man, but it doesn't need to be. It, it, one of the core themes of this movie is how do you, what do you do after you save the world? And that's yeah. really, I'm, I'll tell you, that's like Scott's, that's the, that's the journey he goes on. Right. And right. you need to, to, that's such an important thing to have to, to look at of, oh, there's more stories going on here. And so, yes, like things happen in the past. You should be happy about those things happening, but there's still more to come and there's more you have to know. And I think right. it, did a good job and um if you hate the way that modok looks that means that to me tells me you've never watched anything else from marvel that he's appeared in or read the comics because guess what he's a gross little boy in everything he, he looks sucks. stupid he looks stupid i i he's absolutely meant to look stupid absolutely i i i've always hated modok just because i think he looks like one of the dumbest characters but like that's that's what it is you know what i mean like there yeah. there are so many characters out there that really don't look great you know what i mean and especially villains they are they are 
essentially their own test subjects most often. You know what I mean? Right. MODOK was literally... It, 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 MODOK just, stands for machine designed... Uh, machine only designed... Machine mechanical organism designed only for killing. Yeah, so he's literally like a mix between a human and a robot that is right. literally just for killing. <laughs> I mean, it's in the name. Um, exactly. And he just looks like a freaky monster, but villains do. Villains are monsters. Villains are test test subjects gone wrong. Like, that's more and often you, than not villains. <laughs> and, like, if you look at it and say, oh, the CGI is so bad, look at what they did with MODOK. That's a hard character to CGI and yeah. make it look like real. And also, if you look at the other like beings in that movie, they're CGI'd very well. So and, if you're going to say, say one, one character looking bad, because there are some characters in other movies that look bad. And and let me say this. At least it's not George Lopez and Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Like yeah, I keep seeing the comparisons <laughs> to that, and it's like, it's no. It's not that bad. That was all. bad. <laughs> like, is. this... Uh, from what I've seen, it, it you uh, you try animating a giant head with tiny little arms and tiny little bodies and robotic parts mixed in there. You do it. Like, come on, I, it's it's tough. It's a Jonathan tough character. Majors, yeah, Jonathan Majors gives such an incredible performance in it, and to say it's not a good movie, it's not worth watching because the CGI is bad, is detrimental to him. Yeah. Because it's worth watching just for him in this movie. And uh, it's such a good... Uh, it's it's so much better than people are saying it is. Yeah, um, I agree. People... I, I've learned to tune out people's opinions until I see it for myself. Because more often than not, I fall in love with the movie that everybody thinks is absolute garbage. <laughs> right. Uh, but I'm going to give it a 7.8 out of 10. Cool. Uh, I'm going to skip over my number 7 movie. Okay. And I'm going to leave that to talk about next week because I have so much to say on that. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Um, number eight was Cocaine Bear. Oh, you saw that? I saw that. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's such a wild concept. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Cocaine Bear, uh, it is a deep character study into this family of orphans from the 1930s. No, it's it's a bear that does cocaine. <laughs> uh, so in uh, i believe it's based off of a true story but in the 80s um some drug smugglers dropped cocaine into a national park somewhere in the south a bear got into it and later died um and they found the packaging and just like they knew that the bear had cocaine this movie is an imagination of what it would be like to be trapped in the woods with a bear that's high on cocaine it's it's great it sounds amazing it's, like just like it you, you have to go into it like thinking this is not going to be a blockbuster movie but just a really fun time like it's not a thinker like it's right. literally i'm going to see a bear on cocaine <laughs> right like there's a movie called velocipaster about a pastor uh, that can turn into a velociraptor yeah it's it's that same idea like sharknado it's like oh yeah what if a tornado picked up sharks it's dumb but one of the dumbest concepts yes absolutely i've i've heard such good things like there's a cult following behind like sharknado and those movies like it's they're like, terrible movies know. they're terrible movies but like watch watch them anyway it's still a fun time so, uh it's also um one of ray Liotta's last movies okay um ray Liotta, if you're not sure who that is I believe he played Buffalo Bill in um, The Silence of the Lambs. He was also in the critically acclaimed movie Hubie Halloween. I he don't think he played Buffalo Bill. Bill. Did he? I know Maybe. he was at least in the movie. I, I could yeah, be wrong I, about who he played, but I know he was in it. I recognize the guy, so I know who you're talking about. <clears throat> um, but he's in it. O'Shea Jackson Jr., who is Ice Cube's son. Uh, okay. He's in it. And uh, the only, I don't, I don't say the only notable actor, but the only one that I recognized um, besides them was Jesse Tyler Ferguson, who's Mitchell on Modern Family. 
Okay. Um, All right. Do not come into this movie expecting smart, witty dialogue. It is funny. <laughs> it is good, but there's not a lot that's said. The 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 dialogue and uh, action in the film is funny. It's good, but it's not like a thinker, like I said. It was directed right. by Elizabeth Banks, so of course it's still funny and entertaining. She mm -hmm. also directed Pitch Perfect for you, Matt. Ha <laughs> He's just watching that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a good movie, and you should watch it. Eight point two out of ten. All right. Uh, number nine is Jesus Revolution. Jesus Rev. Okay. This is about a uh, spiritual revolution that happened in the 1970s, I believe, about how um, the hippie community started getting reached out to because um, this is how it was framed in the movie. This is based off of real events that happened in uh, the country. I'm not okay. sure if this is like a one-to-one -one thing, but in the movie, a... Um, a pastor in a small church in California. Um, his daughter picked up his hippie on the side of the road one day, and he st she they started talking about religion. Like on the back of his shirt, it says Jesus loves you, and he kind of looks like Jesus. His name was Lonnie Frisbee. Um, Lonnie so, Frisbee. I'm not even joking to you. <laughs> okay, this is a real person. <laughs> gotcha. Um. And so they, 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 she brings him home, says, Dad, I just talk to this guy, please. And they talk, and the, the dad, the pastor who's played by uh, uh, Kelsey Grammer, uh, Fraser, okay. um, he's like, Wow, this, like, he sees that, like, this hippie knows what he's talking about. Like, he can quote scripture. He's like a true believer, quote unquote. Right. And so, like, it's like, Oh, maybe what we think about hippies isn't the truth. Um, and so he invites him and his friends to church, and like the 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 hippie population of this church continues to grow. Of course, there are people within the church that are like, "You can't bring hippies in here," blah, 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 blah. and he doesn't <laughs> listen to them. Uh, and then he brings more in and gives like a hippie band. And the one dude gets up and leaves in the middle of the service, and he like takes his wife with him. And then this other guy that was like, <clears throat> like the "Hey, you gotta stop" guy goes uh gets up and looks like he's about to leave but actually sits down with the hippies and like they enjoy a good service <laughs> and it basically just then chronicles one journey of this guy who was doing drugs after being in military school and how he became a very influential pastor in his like growth throughout this church uh in the early days of it interesting um it was very cool uh i liked the dialogue there were some things that like I was like, all right, okay. <laughs> like how they depicted people being high and just things like that. Yeah. Um, but as it is a real story, I uh, I do think it has some merit to it in some places. And like, I don't know, maybe it's just my own like internalized uh, view of the church that I was like, guys, please do better. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know how it is sometimes. Um, yeah. But it's a good solid movie. Uh, 7.9 out of 10. Interesting. Uh, and the last movie that I saw, uh, the tenth movie I've seen this year. Again, we will talk about number seven. I will give you a teaser for what it is okay. after I'm done with this one. Uh, is Thunder Force? This came out in 2019, I believe, on Netflix. Okay. It was. Um, oh, you just said her name earlier. You thought she was on SNL and Ghostbusters. Melissa McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer. Okay. Um, basically, in the '80s, a solar flare happened, and it gave a bunch of people superpowers in Chicago. But it's only people that are prone to being psychopaths. Oh, nice! And so they're psychopaths, and so they just became evil. And then um, they're called miscreants. One of the miscreants kills Octavia Spencer's character's parents. And so she devotes her whole life to being able to figure out how to stop the miscreants. She's super smart. Um, Melissa McCarthy's character is more of like a tough bullhead character. And then um, they end their friendship over the fact that Octavia Spencer's character just wants to be smart and has to focus on uh, rectifying what's done to her parents. But Melissa McCarthy's just wanted a friend. Yeah. Um, of course, they're played by younger actors. It's not them in in high school and middle school and all that but eventually um they grew up octavia spencer super successful she has a genetics company Lisa mccarthy works in the docks uh, unloading trailers um and 
things ensue to where um, Melissa McCarthy accidentally gets superpowers of nice. super strength, uh, and Octavia Spencer gets invisibility. They become superheroes, start taking down the supervillains. Uh, one of those villains is. Um, do you watch Ozarks? No. Uh, Oh, I know, I know. I um, I just don't. I don't know this guy's name. I I'm like you. I should be watching more movies. No, uh, don't. It, Ozark's a TV show, and it's about selling drugs. You don't need to watch it. Jason Bateman, one of the oh. villains, is Jason Bateman, and he's a crab. Like he he has <laughs> crab arms. Like, <laughs> and uh, he reveals how he got his crab powers because uh, he was on honeymoon with his wife, and uh, they just went skinny dipping over some radioactive crabs and one of them bit him on his uh <laughs> his bits his and bits he became half crab his tim bits yeah yeah no i got you <laughs> that's amazing did you just make a tim hortons reference i did i did um, we need more we need more tim hortons, with tim hortons canadians never mind <laughs> um but it wasn't horrible. Like I looked it up, the Rotten Tomato score has it at twenty two percent. I don't think it was that bad. Twenty two. Like it's not a it's not a great movie, but yeah. like it's not horrible. I'd put it at a seven point nine. All right, nice. Uh, and the teaser for next week. This is the the second worst movie I've seen this year. Oh boy. Um, okay. But the content is what I want to unpack with you. Not just with you, but with the listener. Okay. Magic Mike's Last Dance. You did not watch that. <laughs> oh and I my didn't god! Didn't watch it alone. I watched it with Jared and Josh. You? Why? <laughs> I am so excited we to the discuss this next week. We paid money. We were out eating wings, and we were like, you guys want to go to the movies after this? I like, think Jarrett said that. And I was like, well, there's nothing really out. And we were looking at what was out. The first thing we saw was Magic Mike's Last Dance. And we are like, wouldn't it be fun if we did? And all of us were like, well, we've seen the first one, but we haven't seen the second one. And you so seen we, the first one? Yeah, me, <laughs> me, Thomas, Christina, and somebody <laughs> else watched it. What, what, a, what a time we, we had at college. Aaron. I think <laughs> I think I watched it with Aaron. I Coll don't college, college is a time for experimentation, and if you haven't watched Magic Mike while you're in college, uh, get on it. You know, yeah. While you're sure. at it, watch Fifty Shades of Grey <laughs> and all of those ones. While you're at it, <laughs> I didn't pick the movie. It wasn't my turn to pick the movie. It was gotcha. one of those things where it's like uh, we all pick the movie. It's fine, and so it's. Ugh. It's him. It's 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 Channing Tatum and Salma Hayek. Yeah, and I love Salma Hayek, but why? Why is she in this? <laughs> why is she in this? We're gonna, we're we're gonna talk about this. I promise you. But oh, all right, but all right. Well, for now, I'll just say. <laughs> I'm sorry, I burped. <laughs> for now, let's just say thank you for listening to this week's episode of <laughs> of the podcast. Uh, you can find us on. I got it. I got it. Shut up. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the College Boys. You can find us on our social media, social medias at uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at the Garlic Boys. Hey, you got you can, it, huh? Uh, we'd also appreciate it if you could support us on Patreon. Like we say every week, our lowest tier starts at three dollars, and we have exclusive content on there for higher members, including our monthly series, The Garlic Press. Uh, and that is with me, Matt, and my brother AJ. Listen, uh, hold on. I I, I gotta yeah. say something while we're on the topic. Yeah. What what do we have to do? What do we have to do to get you to pay money? Should, do I need to do I need to send you do do I need to send you things? Do 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 you do you, Give me, give me your address. I'll, I'll send you, I'll send you socks. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll give you a sock subscription. No, I, I'm not. What, what do we need to do? Set up a sticker store? Like, yeah. What, what, do we, what do we need to do to, for you to give us money? Like, just give us money. We have to start it. planning more exclusive content that'll come out in the future, where Matt and I will actually be in the same room, and maybe we'll have other people there with us as well to create a fun content. 
do we do we have to start living at your beck and call? Because just tell me, tell me, give me, give me, give me some money I'm, a month, and I will I'm, literally I'm drive you to your house. I will literally drive to any of your houses. I don't the the listeners we have in drive, you won't even drive to my house to hang the, out. The listeners we have in Belgium, I'll fly there. Yeah, try me, try me. I will fly there. I will fly there right now just subscribe come on i'm I'm telling you there's so much coming and you you want to get to it early yeah you don't want to miss it i'll I'll tell you this if if we get to oh how many should we say if we if we get to to 15 <laughs> think that's a good number if you get to 15 We'll release the unreleasable episode on <laughs> on uh, Patreon exclusively. Oh, I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifteen listeners or fifteen subscribers, patrons, and fifteen you'll... Patreon supporters. You hit that number goal, and we'll release that unreleased episode. You'll get it. You'll get it. There's other fun content coming out for Patreon exclusively. So yeah, get in on the ground floor. We're... We're still building. We're still building, but I promise help you us build. It. Help us build. Thank you. you yeah. want us to do more? Help us, guys. Come on. I promise you won't regret it. Another way you can help us is by watching these videos on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, watch us on there. Um, it's the same podcast fun, but you get to see our faces and our reactions to things as it happens. Like we said earlier, uh, like pretty warning for it though, but watch the episode where Matt gets punished. It's up there. He's so angry. It's so <laughs> much fun to watch. Um, and new episodes go up every Wednesday at noon. It's yeah. it's it's just a fun time. It's a good old time, yeah. 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 Matt, any final thoughts? Um no, I got I got nothing. <laughs> Well, on that note, thank you for listening, and please remember to stay garlicky. garlicky. Yeah, freaking nailed it, dude! <laughs> nailed it, dude! Hot <Hack> out, dude! <laughs>